Welcome to working with Sketchbook Pro. Just the example here is, is a quick concept, marker style, storyboard style of a chrome ball. Very similar type technique to um, doing storyboards, but very much a conceptual piece and very much like working traditionally. And that's what's great about this program. But it's got the benefits of the digital side and, and undoes, of course. Anyway, just clicking here just to quickly go through what we've got here. We've just got our Brushes Lagoon. Now, this is not an actually uh, example of how to really use the program, but I might just touch on a few things as we go through. Very simple program to use and pick up. And if you already use programs like Photoshop, then really fast to pick up. Lots of similar things. Anyway, what we've got here is just um, normal blending modes for all of them, really. But um, uh, what we're going to do at this stage is I've just got my line, I've got my tone here, and I've just got a shadow. So I just want to put something together really quickly like that. So just to begin with, I'm just going to uh, turn all of these off. As you can see, these are all layered as well. So just click on the eye and turn them off. And what I want to do is either create a new layer from here, or I can actually just click here, and it's a new layer as well. So first thing I'm probably going to do is I'm going to just uh, name it. So I'll just go bring this in, and I'll just put a line for this, and just click the OK. And of course, once we start drawing, we'll see an image coming up here. So the other thing I'm going to do is just over on my brushes here, I've got this lovely, uh, for the 2016 version of the sketchbook, is a blob brush, or not a blob brush, but an ink brush, um, which gives you a nice hard line. So if I double click on that, you can see just how hard the line is. And we've got this, uh, of course, a whack on tablet to, to drive it. So it's got that really nice inking line, great for comic type stuff as well. But what I want to show you, if you don't have that, and particularly earlier versions, is you can say click on anything. It just doesn't really matter what the tool is here. But if I click on that, you can see sort of the current tool here. But if I go down through the standard sets here, you can see that you can actually add a new brush here. So what I'm going to do is uh, add a new brush. And uh, based on current brush, I might just go standard just to see what we get here. And I'll just go create. And here's my little brush coming in here. If I double click on this, then you get, um, might be slightly different way you see this depending on what version you've got, but basically you can come down here and play with things um, which enable you to do uh, all sorts of uh, varied effects to change your line. And probably quite a good one you might want is just to sharpen up the line here. So radius and all sorts of things, just in order for you to get the best line. So go through and just select something that's good for you and uh, of course you can use the basic settings or advanced settings which give you quite a range to just get that beautiful sort of line effect you want. I'm just going to close that and you're going to get something like this. Now by the way if you end up with a whole lot and you think I don't really want them anymore, just with that selected I can also just come back up here and where you create a new one of course you can delete it from here and just go delete and that's gone. Anyway, what I want is my good old, I'm um, just going to close that, and I've currently got sort of black, I've brought my colours up here, there's um, all sorts of colour effects here, if I can bring in my Copic range, um, and just run through them like that, all the different colours, of course anything with these Copic markers, which are really great, you can also just sort of take down and store in your custom set as well, but I'm just going to stay with just simple colours to begin with. And what I'm going to do here is just stay with a nice dark colour. You can also um, open it from here and close oh, just to access the main colours as well. But anyway, I've got my colours here. I'm just going to go to my ink brush and I want to do this sort of outer line for basically the chrome ball on the line effect here. So I'm going to just go through and get my radial sort of uh, circle effect here. Uh, you've got your ruler here, which of course move anywhere you want. And notice how you've got your angles down the bottom, just here. Anyway, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go on the radial circle. I'm just going to undo that, just so I don't get that little line there. And that's probably quite a good size. In my blob brush, I'm just going to sort of create a, just by pushing it harder and thinner, just sort of an effect for my chrome ball here. I'll just harden up a little bit there. I'm just going to reduce it a little bit in by dragging here. Now, by the way, if you've got a funny size like so, you can just double click on this and it'll just take you back to a perfect radius. Okay, so I'm just going to go inside a little bit here. So I'm just doing a really rough one, but uh, oops, went off that just a little bit. 
and that looks pretty good at that stage and I'm just going to go and turn it off. You turn it on there and you turn it off there. So I'll turn it off and what I'm going to do is just sort of come in here and just create the illusion of this Chrome ball out. Now, now Chrome is sort of very much about a logical um, hard edge reflective type surface so you see a lot of reflection of course in it and you can just make up something that's going to give some some dark edges. So, so I'm doing this pretty quick but um, so I've got my effect at the moment and there's my line. So with my line what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just go through and just leave that for the time being and I'm going to create another layer here and I'm just going to create that with a new layer there and I'll um, I think I've just duplicated that, I'm just going to undo that once more. I'm just going to uh, go to new layer. Don't want to duplicate it. Okay, just want to add a new layer. That's better. And I'm going to call that just color. And just over here, just type in CRL just to make color anyway. And I'm going to drag this down below so I can just drag it just beneath my line. Okay, you can have it above or below and move it wherever you want, but um, and that's the advantage of doing this when you just want to get more access to seeing some things. But uh, now I've got my effect here, what I'm going to do is I can just start painting up, but I'm going to use the lock pixel effect basically. Uh, rather than just painting and having to rub out the edges, which is a normal way of working, for example if I just uh, get my, say, I'll go to my airbrush tool, which should just be down here somewhere, and um, whatever color, I might just choose a sort of lighter color there. And I'm just going to drag out my airbrush to be a little bit bigger. But as I start painting, I'm, and I'm doing an effect here, it wasn't the airbrush tool I was after. But anyway, I've gone over the edge here. So if you, I like to be quite loose sometimes. Uh, just the airbrush tool, just select that again. See that it's sort of going over the edge, but I, I might not want to do that, especially with soft edge brush, brushes, because you have to go and get the rubber and then rub it out. So sometimes to speed yourself up, what I'm going to do is on my um, color layer here, I'm just going to go through and uh, get my um, same tool here, and I'm just going to basically, just with my outer line there as well, just going to drag it up just so it fits, and I'm just going to run the color all the way around here. Now I've gone a bit over the edge, but just doing a quick demonstration. And uh, essentially, I can just turn that off. And because that's a full area, if I just turn my line off here, on this layer, I'm a bit of target layer, I'm just going to get my paint bucket and just uh, fill it in there. Okay. Now I might not have the right color at this stage, but I'm just sort of showing you this way. I'd probably have done it in really a white. But nonetheless, with the whole thing selected here, I'm going to go and lock the pixels. Now this is the same sort of thing in Photoshop, but the pixels are now locked. So I'll just turn this back on, and here's the shape. So because the pixels are locked, I can't go over the edge. So what I want to do is I'm just going to go back and now get a lighter color. Um, right back to white, say. If I really want to go solid white, I can just go there. But um, with my um, airbrush tool, um, just make it a little bit bigger, and it's, you can actually play with by moving this around the opacity as well. Okay, I want nice and opacity, and then you sort of size by clicking in these little um, uh, indicators here just to play with the size. So I can actually just start uh, painting that in. Okay, and I can go right over the edge, and it doesn't matter. It's not going over the edge. It's only staying within that area. So I might have I might have started off with a lighter color first. Sometimes it's it's great just to work back in. Okay, I'm just going to go around the edge and just so I can actually build it. I'm sort of working quite often the reverse way I work by using this method with a darker color. But that uh, gives you a nice effect as well. So I might just go and get a uh, slightly darker color and just start chucking it in here. And I'm just going to build up um, color down here as well. Let's bring that in. I might just bring that a bit smaller just by bringing it here and sliding it across. Click in there and just drag it in, and just actually starting to color up the effect here. Now of course you can swap to any other tools at any stage, like I might want to go to my, um, let's see, my brush here, and make that as big as small as I want. 
and you can actually just start colouring that in as well, especially if you want to get a little bit more accurate on how you're putting th things together. But I'm going to stay with the airbrush, just try and keep it a little bit soft to begin with. Make it a little bit bigger and just put that in like so. Okay, and uh, as you see, it's starting to come together. And what I'm going to do now is my just brighten up whatever colors that um, you, you sort of want to reflect, and that's really what sort of chrome is about much of the time that are in here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just do a quick fix up of this shape, which is basically just to go back to my um, white at the top here, or white down the bottom. And I'm just going to just clean that up there, just to give it that much higher contrast, sort of what chrome's about. In fact, I might even go to a, uh, a brush just to pick up the edges here, just initially, get the white, and then just go back to my airbrush, just to sort of soften it a little bit in the end. Okay. Now, um, as it's coming together, let's say that that's... Um, I'm fairly happy with this. I might just actually just go and get my pencil tool and uh, I'm just going to play with a few extra colours just to give it a, a bit of effect here. So pencil tool, again, you can just drag it to whatever you want. And I just want to just give it a few effects here just to, just to bring it in, maybe even with the um, tool here for the um, radio tool. And I just want to just probably bring that down a little bit. just want to give it a, a little bit of an effect here. As it comes through. Just going to drag it down here. And I'll just turn this off again. And I'm just going to add that in. Just start playing with some effects as it, as it starts developing. Maybe even change the colour now. And I'm just going to start just adding a few effects in here. Just to keep it loose. And that's sort of really what I wanted to do with this the feel of this image at the moment. In fact, at the top, I'm just going to double click to make sure it's, the radio is in place. Just add up a little bit higher here. And I'm just going to bring it down just to add something in here as well, just because I can. And maybe just give it a bit of airbrush just to finish off. Just to darken that up. Anyway, you can see the thing sort of starting to come together and you can play with it as much as you like and, until you're happy with it. So anyway, there's the sort of the, the start of the, the chrome ball. Um, what I need to do now, of course, is get the background. And if I just um, basically turn the line off, you can see that there's that shape, but it's all self-contained. There's nothing that actually goes out because it's been locked pixels. Now, if you want to do the background, you just have to unlock the pixels of it or unlock the pixels on the right layer. But nonetheless, that's all you do. Click it here and click it off. So I don't want to work on this layer anymore. Um, I'll leave the pixels um, locked, I think. I'll just turn that back on. And what I want down here is a layer uh, that goes underneath my shadow. And this is an advantage of also having it um, a totally opaque background because the shadow is going to be behind it, not have to be rubbed out later as well. So I'm just going to click here and just go shadow and then it comes in the right area without having to drag it into spot. So just go up here and name it. I've actually just done the wrong one again, so I'm just going to delete that one and just go through and name this layer. Let's call it Shadow. As you can see, really, it's so forgiving, this program. And I'll go OK. Got my shadow here. What I want to do is a nice sort of a shadow effect. Now, to make it easy for me, I'm going to click on my um, ruler here. Remember, we're, up, we're below here. The ruler, I'm just going to bring that into place. It's about right. I've got my uh, color here, that's uh, great. I might just start off with a um, lighter color to begin with. And I'm just going to just tr run that through. Now it's make it a bit bigger. And there it is, just the shadow effect appearing here. And it stays on the line, makes it really, really easy. It's going to go to something darker here. I do have a little bit that goes outside and I was a little bit careless with the line there, but I can just rub that out in a minute. But anyway, here's my shadow. I might even go through and just add a few little effects to it. So I'm going to turn the ruler off 
and you know just to give it a, a you know a, just a, a little bit of a line fix for a sketchy type feel it should you want to do that so here's the file here I'm just quickly going to go and fix this so click back here doesn't matter uh, well the pictures are locked so I'm just going to basically just uh, unlock that and I'm just going to go and rub that out just whatever size my rubber is there just to clean that up just where the shadow is there, don't have to worry about all of it here it is, basically it's uh, almost finished at this stage um, we've just got our three layers here what I might want to do here of course is uh, just to give it a little bit more opacity is just with this, a little bit like Photoshop just go to mult multiply if you want to make it a little bit darker now if you see, I'll click on multiply there Okay. It's just going to make it a little bit darker. Now, if you don't want to multiply, you want to keep it normal. I'll just go it to normal here. I'm going to lock the pixels on this top one, and I just want to soften down some of those black lines, uh, which actually adds a bit more finesse. So I'm just going to go back to my airbrush tool here, um, just with the colors wherever I want, make sure it's thick enough. It's locked, so it just basically affects the line and the line only. Just in the areas that I might want to soften it down a little bit there just to get a little more finesse of course I can go back to the dark line if I want to keep that back in there and um, I might even just want to warm it up in some areas as well so you can do that just to get it the finesse of how the line should go together so that's just a quick example of just putting the chrome ball together and um, you know, have, have a go and enjoy it. So that was, just, that was pretty quick. Maybe a little bit more time if I just turn these ones off. And just come back to this one. And I think I had a little bit more finesse in this particular one. Just going to turn that shadow off and turn that shadow on. But nonetheless, uh, a quick way of doing a chrome ball. So please enjoy Sketchbook Pro.